Hello everyone! So I've recently had someone ask me what the SSAO, the Screen Space Ambient Occlusion settings on the camera do. And rather than sit here and explain it to you, I decided I would rather just show you what the camera settings do. So I have here spawned Liara and a random corner of two walls that I spawned. And I picked these models in particular because the white of the walls shows off the differences really well. And then the complex shapes of Liara shows off how the screen space settings take effect. So beyond those, I just added a camera and you know, I just set you know, 85 millimeter and I set it up with default settings. And we're just going to go through and I'm just going to show you what all these settings do. And then also end the video with my preferred amplit occlusion settings. They vary a bit from scene to scene, but I generally go with the same general aesthetic. So first of all, we have the radius. So it defaults nearly fairly high, and if we kick it forward, you can see that the range of the ambient occlusion grit grows as the radius goes up. And if I go the other way, it shrinks. And you can really see this on Liara. If you follow the curvature of her body, her arms, her hips, and everything, you can really watch how it tightens up. Like, watch this blue line along her shirt. And you can just watch how the ambient occlusion tightens. So that's what the radius does. So now what the strength does is it increases the intensity. So as I increase it, you can see the intensity of the ambient occlusion gets stronger. And you can see if you go high enough, you even get a, a dark glow of ambient occlusion around the model. You can go the other way, you can loosen it and turn it off. And you can see this one really well. If you go to render settings and do show ambient occlusion and you play with strength, you can see it really clearly like that. So that's what that does. And now for the bias. So the bias, I'm not really certain of the best way to describe the bias. I kind of think of it as a, sort of a gradient almost. So if you look at this wall, you see you have a lot of little scatterings on the wall, these little tiny dots. And as I kick the bias down, more of that grit shows up. And then similarly, if I go the other way, it goes back. So the way that I think the bias works, and I'm not completely convinced of this, but I think the bias goes off uh, view angles. So it takes into account things like the bump map, the normal map, and things like that. And basically, it uses that combined for the camera is to determine the intensity of the shadow. So when you kick the bias down, it makes the ambient occlusion really sloppy and it doesn't really care too much. It's like, oh, well, this is slightly shadowed. I'll give it full ambient occlusion. And so you get that really gritty, heavy ambient occlusion going on. And if you go the other way, you make it more picky. And so only steeper angles, like these angles along the armpit, get the ambient occlusion. So, so I'm going to quickly throw in a light and we'll see how the ambient occlusion plays with the light when I preview at 128. So I'm just going to kick this light over here. Give it a radius. We'll give it a slight yellow orange color. And then we'll just come back to the camera. And we'll come over here and we will kick this to 128. I'm going to quickly reorient this light towards that corner. There we go. So now I'll keep this up. There's 128. So this is with uh, default camera settings. It does, goes like this with uh, 128 samples. So now if I were to kick all of these values way up and kick the yeah, kick them all up, why not? It behaves like that, where you actually have this sort of negative light aura. And then similarly, if I kick it all the way to the other direction, you know, there is no ambient occlusion. It looks really simple. And then as I just tune these things individually, you can see it just sort of tunes how the ambient occlusion around like you know, her neck and the armpit and such behave. Okay, so I'm just going to end this video real quickly on my personal settings, which are 
kick the radius down, the bias up, and the strength up. So when you do that, you can see that you sort of get these strong shadows where the light isn't hitting, like this region of the armpit right here, and that's being mostly caused by the strength. So it's like I generally kick the strength up to just shy of where that dark shadow starts to appear, so something like that. And then the bias I temper for the same, and then the bias, um, I meant radius, if I said bias, I, I, I temper the radius. And then the bias I usually just use to sort of keep it so the more shallow angles don't have ambient occlusion. I tend to keep it so it's only the more tight and extreme angles that get ambient occlusion. So that's in a nutshell what the ambient occlusion settings on the camera does and those are my preferred general settings that I use. I hope this was informative.